Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are. Sorry, I forgot my microphone again. One of these days, I'll get it all together. Um, thank you for joining. My name is Casey Durango. Uh, my channel is Go Keto with Casey, as you probably know if you're here. And um, make sure I've got this all set up properly. What is going on here? Okay, weird stuff going on on my screen. Hope everyone's uh, being able to see this. Good morning, again, sorry for the delay. Um, if, uh, if you are new to this, this is a live broadcast. If you do not enjoy live broadcasts, you might want to go to another video uh, because I do like to interact with the people who bother to show up and comment couple of topics today, or at least one topic, and this is kind of a Friday pep talk type of thing, not that I have all the pep or all the information, but uh, sometimes we can stand a little, a little extra going into the weekend. So that's what I'm doing. Excuse me as I grab a tissue or a paper towel, my runny nose, which I cannot seem to get rid of. Good morning, good morning to everyone. Thank you so much for showing up couple of housekeeping um, matters at the beginning. I did live stream the, um, the Low Carb Support Group meeting in Durham on Tuesday evening. And thank you so much for everyone who showed up. I apologize. I know that there were people who did super chats for that. And I just, because I was helping facilitate the meeting with Dr. Eric Westman. I just could not look at the comments or questions or acknowledge super chats or anything. But for the for those of you who did that, I really appreciate that. Um, and it, it means a lot. Uh, thank you. So I hope everyone got something out of the Tuesday evening group meeting. I am so disorganized this morning. My stuff is not in front of me. Um, I hope that I hope that everyone got something out of it. It was a really well attended meeting. People traveled from far away, from New York, to see Dr. Westman, not to see me, to see Dr. Westman at his clinic and then uh, stayed over the for the next day for the support group meeting. I thought there was good information. I learned some new things. A couple of topics that were covered. Um, what about doing uh, the ketogenic or low carb if you're going into surgery? You know, and Dr. Westman said, absolutely fine. As a matter of fact, there is some evidence, some anecdotal. You know, Dr. Westman likes to follow the evidence and the research. He just doesn't say things. That there may be faster recovery time if someone is, a, is um, burning um, fat for fuel, if someone is following the ketogenic diet. Something that could be lack of infl or lowering of inflammation. Who knows? So that's a pretty good thing to know. Um, so <clears throat> one thing, I, the topic of this conversation is, and, and this has come up on the Keto After 40 and Beyond Facebook group, which has gotten really big, guys, really large. I've seen several posts where people say, I just can't do this. I can't do it. I've tried and I've tried again. I can't even make it through a day or I can't make it through a weekend. I can't do it. And I think that is a really common feeling for, for humans when we try anything that's different. But, and particularly when it's radically different. So let's give ourselves a break. If you've tried to do the keto, to start a ketogenic diet, that, you know, let's explain what that means. A ketogenic diet is one where your carbohydrate intake has been lowered to a point where your liver is not pumping out glucose. And glucose is something which your pancreas has to pay attention to and shoot out insulin to get the glucose out of the blood because if you have too much glucose in your blood, that's, that's diabetes. That's a very dangerous thing. So you lower your carbohydrate intake to the point where your liver is not putting out glucose. Without the glucose, your system looks for an alternative fuel source, essentially. And we'll start looking for, we'll start burning ketones, which it's happy to do. And it can mobilize ketones from our body fat, which is ideal. 
Okay, it's a fantastic way to be. So, but in order to do that, you're really, really changing from the standard American diet. We're changing from everything we've been told by the government, by the media, certainly by the food manufacturers. So we, we more than flip the dreaded food pyramid upside down. You know, the food pyramid would have us eating in standard American diet, eating about 60% of our carbohydrates, uh, calories from carbohydrate. We don't want anything like that. We don't look at percentages. We look at grams, okay? It's much easier to do. We want very few carbs. The carbs that I get in a day are generally coming from whatever vegetables, if any, that I eat. I might have about that many, that much, my fist, of sautéed zucchini. Um, and I might have an, half an avocado a day. And then the rest is going to be fatty sources of protein. So that is so different than what we're doing that it can be intimidating, it can be scary, and it can be, it can be hard. A ketogenic way of eating is simple, okay? Keep your grams of carbohydrate 20 or fewer a day, total, not net. Eat fatty sources of protein. Eat only when you're hungry and stop when you're satiated. That's simple. That doesn't mean it's easy. But I'm here to tell you, you may think that you've tried, you know, tried 10 times and you couldn't make it through a weekend or a day or a meal. Doesn't mean you won't ever be able to. It just means that you need some more at-bats. And almost all of us have needed at-bats. Um, I tell you one thing that I will try to refrain from ever telling anyone is, well, you just don't want it bad enough. No, it's not the case. If you're trying, you want it bad enough. You want it bad enough if you're trying. Because it's a weird thing to do, let's face it. I mean, it's not really weird. It's the way humans ate for millennia, up until about 10,000 years ago, which means up until about 30 seconds ago in human time. But it's so weird from everything we were raised on, everything our parents were raised on, everything going back about 60, 70, 80 years. Um, and it's only, you know, it's only become harder with our generation and our children's generation because the food is so readily available, so highly processed, and so much sugar. Um, and, and let's keep in mind, a bagel is sugar. A bowl of steel-cut oats is sugar. Sugar is sugar. Snickers bar is sugar. Soda is sugar. Potatoes are sugar. Pasta is sugar. Rice is sugar. It's all sugar as far as your liver is concerned. Okay? Keep that in mind. Um, but if you think you can't, just know that you can. Sometimes you have to trick yourself. When I first started, I was pretty highly motivated. It was not to say that I wanted it more than anybody else. But I didn't, I was not in a good place. And it wasn't, it was the weight. I was they were not happy being a fat person. But I didn't want to take uh, insulin for diabetes. I was so close. I knew that that was going to be next. Many of you know I have been diagnosed with and treated for cancer three separate times in my life, starting back when I was pregnant with our third child. And somehow that was easier to take than the idea of taking di to insulin for diabetes because I would totally blame myself for the diabetes because that's what we're taught. Oh, if you're, if you're fat, if you're diabetes, you just caused it, cow. Hmm, might have, but it was because I was following your advice. I was doing everything I could. I was doing the low fat and the whole grains. I ground wheat berries in my Vitamix and baked our home-baked bread. I was a crunchy granola person. Still am kind, I just leave out the granola. <laughs> um, I'm just crunchy. So, it came easier for me merely because of where I was. I don't wish that 
state of mind on anyone. So I'm not going to say I just wanted it more than you did do if you know if you're struggling with it. Do this. If you are trying and you're struggling, make a deal with yourself. Maybe the next time you put food in your mouth after this, you're, you say so say you're eating right now or you're getting ready to eat. Say maybe the meal after this one or the snack after this one. Maybe I'll have carbs. But this one I'm just not going to. I'm just not going to this time. I'm not going to die. If I tell and, and, you know, reason with yourself, I'm not going to die if I don't eat carbs for the next two hours. I can go ahead and eat a boiled egg or I can have some bacon or I can have, you know, roast beef, sliced roast beef rolled up around a string cheese and roll that in a romaine leaf. That's great. Nice and crunchy. And then just then don't think about it again. And then the time after that, say maybe the meal after this one, I'll have carbs, but I'm just not going to right now. Those of you who have been through a 12-step program, and, and I am fortunate that I have not needed to, although, you know, uh, I've, I consider many things in trying to get my weight under control. I believe that that is one of the tenets. Maybe if someone is familiar with 12-step um, programs, then you can share. But I believe one of them is, you know, just maybe I'll drink tomorrow, but right now I'm not going to drink. Today I'm not going to drink. Maybe I'll drink in an hour, but right now I'm not going to drink. Don't tell yourself, I'm never going to eat another carb. I'm never going to have another chip or a French fry. I can tell myself that because I know I'm not going to. I don't even want them. I went from someone who was as addicted to them as anybody else to not only do I not want them, I'm a little bit grossed out by the thought of them. But if you are someone who feel like, feels like, I, I can't go through without bread, just say, maybe next meal I'll have bread, but I'm not going to have bread this meal. Try that. You can do this. You think you can't sometimes. It can be discouraging. We you know, hear stories about people. Oh, I lost 30 pounds in four weeks. I'm so happy for those people. And I'm, I'm happy that they share. But that's not everybody. And keep in mind, some people have a lot more to lose maybe than you do. Uh, some people are less metabolically damaged, maybe. Maybe they've tried fewer times, and so it's easier to heal. Sometimes maybe they're uh, stretching the truth a little bit. That can happen, too. You know, some people post these things, and then they want you to click to where they got the idea, and it's clickbait. So take things with a grain of salt. And we want to take our grain of salt because we want five grams of sodium a day. little plug for sodium there. So, again... If you've tried and it and not been able to stick with it, it's okay. Try again. What you know, what are you gonna do for the next day? You don't want to throw up your hands and do what has not worked for you. You something that you know has not worked for you. Give this a try. Keep at it. Look for a good support mechanism, whether it's in real life, if you have friends or family or colleagues that maybe will help you. If it's online, if it's getting a, a coach, that, you know, an accountability person, find somebody who will help you. Speaking of support, I do want to get this in. I know that this, um, this broadcast reaches uh, far afield from where I live. But I am doing something on Tuesday, June 13th, 5.30 p.m. I am starting, this is my first attempt at this, my own little keto support meeting. Keto, low carb, whatever you want to do, informational session. And I'm going to have it at a pancake house just to show you you can eat out and keep it cool, keep it keto. Um, please, if anyone is interested or thinking they're coming, please go to my Facebook page, um, and which is Go Keto with Casey, and I think you'll see the event. And just leave a message because I need to provide a head count. It might just be me and the manager sitting there looking at each other. Um, but I would, I would love to, um, I would love to see how this goes. And it's just an informational get gauge interest for people in green around Greensboro, North Carolina. Okay. So there you go. Um, I do want to, uh, do some housekeeping for those of you who have ordered mugs, wine glasses, or magnets off of my website or a combination. I'm shipping them out as quickly as I can. I do my own fulfillment. And the shipping, the packing, and shipping 
is labor intensive and I'm enjoying it. I'm learning a lot. But thank you for your patience. I will be, every day I'm sending stuff, shooting stuff. For those who don't know, here's a magnet. Refrigerator magnet. This might be showing up in reverse. I apologize if it is. But it says, are you here out of hunger or habit? And then below it says, if food is not your problem, dang it. If hunger is not your problem, food is not the answer. It's just a, just a large refrigerator magnet. And then there's the large mug. Go Keto with Casey and the small mug, 11 and a half ounces. And little tiny wee, wee stemless wine glass that says, All I want to do is drink wine and talk about keto. So thank you for your patience. I just want to let people know that I'm working on it. Um, oh, Lord, have mercy. My computer is going to run out of juice. Hold on. Oh, please. Oh, please. Sorry. As I've said, you would think that I would get this together eventually, but no, seems like I miss something up every day, which is another lesson for life. You think you screw things up. I ought to do a day in the life of Casey screwing up video. That would be the thing between the things I drop. I just think it's just fall out of my hands. Things I forget to do. Um, like microphones and plugging in my computer. Okay. Now, I have covered kind of what I wanted to cover. I would love to recognize people who are asking questions. Does anyone have a particular um have a particular question or something they want to share. Uh, I look at these live broadcasts about uh, to be about you guys, not about me. Um, okay, I'm just watching the comments go. Manuel, thank you for showing up so consistently. Manuel writes, I have been flirting with the idea of cheating, but every time I have the chance to cheat, it's not all that tempting anymore, and the idea makes me feel kind of nauseous. It's both strange and amazing. Right? It's right. Um, you know, I, I say, I've said this before. I've said it before. Now, I'm not trying to sound harsh in this. Um, but people, people say, I can't. I'm addicted to sugar. We are all addicted to sugar. Nature did that by design. And there's a reason for it. But nature did not intend us to have sugar so readily available. Um, sugar used to be hard to come by and carbs used to be hard to come by they were in the form of leaves and the occasional berry it was not until agriculture started with the Egyptians about 10,000 years ago that carbohydrate became available to the masses and we're just not designed to eat it so you go from saying I can't I'm addicted to sugar which I I honor that sentiment, but, but I'm going to tell you, everyone is. Everyone knows how you feel. You go from that thinking, I can't give up my chocolates or my jelly beans or my pasta or my potato or all of it, sugar, to getting over the cravings, to losing interest in it, to being turned off by it. Wow. I never smoked. It's the only bad habit I never picked up, and I don't know why I didn't. I'm so grateful I didn't. I could have. Everyone in my family, my very large family, smoked. No one would have blinked at me if I'd picked up cigarettes at about age 14. I just didn't. And um, I'm really glad I didn't because I don't know that I could have given them up. But I would like to hear from smokers. Is there anyone who used to smoke and is now disgusted by the idea of smoking? I would love to hear that. Um, Okay, so I'm now looking. I'm now looking at comments. <laughs> Someone writes, "Hi, all constipation." Constipation is a topic that comes up a lot. Uh, Jackie Huco, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Ask about constipation. Jackie, are you actually constipated, or are you just eliminating less? Keep in mind, constipation is when you are trying to go 
and it's painful that you can't. There's that, that's one thing, that's constipation. Just eliminating less, if you eat less, you're gonna have less waste. And if your food you're eating is more efficient, you're gonna have less waste. So some people are taught you need to evacuate your bowels, you know, at least every day, twice a day, three times a day. I mean, I don't know what people have been taught, but I'll go for a couple of days, three days sometimes, because I'm not eating that much food, so there's by definition less waste. Okay, losing Drea writes, I used to smoke and quit twice. My husband, my husband smokes and I hate it. He smells bad even though he does go outside to smoke and he comes in and smells like a dirty ashtray. It gags me. So you used to smoke and clearly are not tempted by the smell of smoke and you're not tempted to smoke again. I think it can be the same way with these you know, carb cravings. Um, Okay, mother of many horses writes, I have the opposite problem from constipation, sad phase, but not every day. If you are um, taking a lot of uh, added magnesium, that can have a laxative effect. If you're taking magnesium, try to get a slow release magnesium if you are doing that as a supplement. Um, okay, uh, Keeper Mama writes, how long does it take to get into ketosis typically? That can vary, depends on how, you know, if you're just jumping in and really eliminating carbs. When I started, I was pretty much at zero carbs. Dr. Westman said, keep your carbs below 20 in the white coat video. Made sense to me. I said, well, zero is less than 20. So I didn't eat any. You know, like the next meal, I think I saw the video mid-morning one day, and I was so sad and feeling crappy. I really thought... I know, I know I can stay alive for the next 35 or 40 years. I know some, medical science will find a way to keep me alive. Do I want to be alive feeling like this? Do I want to spend the next 30 years of my life feeling like this? No. So anyway, so the next meal, whichever, whatever it was, um, I just didn't have any carbs. And then the next meal, I didn't have any carbs. I mean, not a stalk of celery, not an asparagus, nothing. I just ate eggs and meat and cheese and sour cream and meat and eggs and cheese and bacon and sausages and you name it, I had it. So anyway, I got in, well, I don't know how quickly I got into ketosis because when I started, I didn't know anything about ketosis. I don't believe his white coat video says anything about ketosis. It just says, keep your carbs below 20, you know. Um, then as I did more research, as the weight started coming off, I started finding out about, this was actually a ketogenic diet, got some urine strips, I was in ketosis, probably fairly quickly. Now, there are those that, in doc, according to Dr. Stephen Finney and Dr. Jeff Ullett, who've written The Art and Science of Low Carbohydrate Living, it can take four days, it can take a month. It just depends. It depends on your physiology. Please keep in mind we're all different. We're vastly different. We're not just a little bit different. This is why a prescribed meal plan, it's been a part, no, it wouldn't work for me. It would absolutely fail for me um, because I'm different than you. And I'm different than the person who made the meal plan. And there's no one um, number of calories that a person should eat or a, an amount that they should weigh. This is from Dr. Stephen Finney's mouth. I've said it before, I've quoted him before, I'll do it again. He would not tell anybody what they should weigh or how many calories they should eat in a day unless they were his identical twin or clone. And even then there might be differences. So here's what you do, keep it simple. Keep your carbs below 20. Eat fatty sources of protein. Don't load up on dietary fat. Eat only when you're hungry. That's the hardest part for me, eating only when hungry. I've pretty much gotten there, but it took a minute. It took me a good long minute to get there. You don't need supplements. There's nothing that you can eat or drink that will drive you into ketosis faster. May, let me repeat this. There's nothing you're going to eat or drink that is going to get your body into ketosis faster. What gets you into ketosis is by what you don't put in your mouth. 
not by what you do. Got it? It's the absence of carbs, not the presence of anything that gets you into ketosis. There are products you can drink that are, people are happy to sell you. Exogenous ketones, supposed powders and shakes, and it's bull, it's expensive, it's a waste of money. Okay? Those things may give you positive readings on keto strips, but it's just because you're spilling over. Let's look at it this way. Let me see if I can come up with an analogy. Um, let's say you're vitamin D deficient. No, that's not a good one. Let's say you're trying to get pregnant. And you really want to see that positive. You want to see that positive sign on the pregnancy test. And let's imagine that there's some liquid you can drink that will result in a positive. It, whatever, it interacts with your urine or whatever and makes a positive. Yay! You've just spent $49 on a liquid that will give you a positive reading on a pregnancy test. But what if you're not pregnant? What if you've just spent $40 on something that will tell you you're pregnant, but you're not pregnant? How happy are you going to be about that? No, you'd be devastated. Now, to my knowledge, there is no such product that will give you a positive reading on a pregnancy test when you're not pregnant. But think about that, okay? So, just stick with keeping the carbs low. It may take you a while. Don't drive to get positive readings. Let your body do the work for you, and it'll get there. You, if you find that you're having cravings, that's very common. That just means that the glucose is still kind of in your system. It's the glucose that tells your brain, that, that makes your brain tell you to go get some more cookies or a brownie or a muffin or a slice of bread or some nabs from the vending machine. It's your brain telling you because that little bit of glucose is looking for more glucose. You get the glucose kind of flushed out, if you hear what I'm saying, and those cravings just kind of stop. Now, that doesn't mean that there won't be challenging times. There are always challenging times. Thank you, Farmer Mima. You were a topic of conversation at the uh, support group meeting. People love Farmer Mima. Um, there's always something that's challenging. So if you say, well, I'm going to do this, but I won't be able to get through this weekend because of the wedding or Father's Day. My husband loves potato salad and a big old uh, Philly cheesesteak on a big old, you know, hoagie. So I, I have to have that for him and I want to have that with him. Well, what's after Father's Day? Uh, what, Fourth of July is coming up. Oh, you got to have apple pie. And, and then after that is... Then there's another wedding, and then there'll be a funeral, um, and then there'll be who knows what. There's always something. There's always something that is a challenge to get through. Forget about the formal big name holidays. Somebody's birthday. Somebody's retiring from work. You know, at offices, they make these big birthday parties, and they bring in, you know, the big cakes. Oh, Kim, thank you so much for the super chat. Thank you so much, Kim. Um, she asks, any more collaborative chat scheduled with Brindis? No, I don't have any um, scheduled. Thank you for asking the question. Um, they, there was a Seinfeld episode where Elaine, they would have these, you know, celebrations in the office, you know, get well, birthday cake celebrations, or somebody's having a birthday or somebody's retiring. They would always bring in these giant cakes. For the office and she realized that every day at about three o'clock she was like getting a sinking spell where's my cake yeah your office brings in you know some offices bring in donuts almost every day um croissant uh they have lunches catered in i know my office um uh, where i i'm fully slowly pulling back from that career but yeah there's always food in the in the kitchen always and it's never great food for us so there's always a reason why it's going to be hard. 
Get through a few of those and you'll feel so empowered. Think how strong you'll be if you get through someone else's birthday party and you kindly decline cake or frankly, just don't eat it with nobody watching because probably no one cares what you're eating or not eating. If they do, that's on them. Um, here's another thing. Don't care what anybody else eats. I don't, I'm going to be harsh here. I don't care what you eat. I don't care whether you do this or not. And that, I don't mean that to be ugly. It's not my business. And I can't tell you what to eat. On, on the, the big keto after 40, people get all, you know, verklempt. Oh, am I doing this right? Other groups say I can't do this. I can't, must do it this way. It's not keto if you're not doing it. I don't care what you eat. Nobody should care what you eat. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. That's fine. You might want to do it later. And it'll be here waiting for you. If this is not the time for you to do this or it's not your cup of tea, that's cool. You don't get extra points in heaven for being spot on your ketogenic diet. You don't get extra points in heaven, as far as I know, for having higher blood ketones than somebody else. My, if so, I'm gold because mine, you know, last time I took them were 4.7. Um, that's just my body chemistry. So always know that there'll always be something. I've been doing this for three and a half years. How many holidays have I gotten through? Uh, how many family feasts have I gotten through? Keep in mind, I have three grown children, all of them married, one grandchild, one on the way. If I could prescribe what my loved ones ate, I would. But I don't get a vote in that, nor should I. Okay? I don't get a vote. If they ask me questions, I answer them. If they're feeling good doing what they're doing and they're healthy, I'm happy for that. If later on they find that they have health or weight challenges, I'll be here to help them if they want it. Frankly, your mother's not always the best person to try to help you, right? Am I right? Am I right? Oh, Susan Cosmos, thank you so much. Susan, I believe you might have done a super chat on this support group meeting, and I really appreciate it. I was trying to look, and I just couldn't keep up. Thank you so much. Um, no one gets a vote on what you eat, and guess what? You don't get a vote on what anybody else eats. Not your business. It's none your business. And what they think about what you're eating, they don't get a vote. I don't care what your mother, your husband, your coworker, your crabby sister-in-law, nobody gets a vote, including your doctor, doesn't get a vote on what you eat. You know, eat a carb-laden diet, and if it works, great. If you're happy, great. I don't get a vote. Eat zero carbs, and if it works for you, great. I don't get a vote. If you're a vegan, and it works, and you're happy, I don't get a vote. Nobody can tell you what to eat. So if you're at a function, a celebration, a party, it's a holiday, I gotta eat this because my Aunt Ida brought it and her feelings will be hurt. She'll get over it. Aunt Ida has seen more in her life to hurt her feelings than you not eating her strawberry rhubarb crumble, okay? She'll get over it. Your mother will get over it. Your husband will get over it if he doesn't like it that you don't eat as much as, you know, he, he, he wants to go out to dinner and you go, but you say, I'm only eating this, and he'll get over it. If he doesn't, you've got more issues going on in your marriage than just what you're eating. Um, so be kind to yourself and ignore the others. It's nobody else's business what anybody eats. I don't know why we feel we have a right to tell each other what to eat or tell them that they're doing something wrong. Um, okay, and Rosga? 79, hi everyone. This is my first time on this chat. Welcome. So glad you're so glad you're here. Um, Chelsea says, going to the movies today. Bring my homemade broth with me. How are you gonna sneak it in? Not in your pocket, I bet. <laughs> um Linda Sharon, keep her mom. I just checked out and it's 2425 on Amazon. It's a Nova Max brand. Um, and Linda, thank you for sharing that. I assume you're talking about a ketone meter. Make sure that you can, that it will read ketone strips. Nova brand might. 
I, I honestly just don't know. I use the Precision Extra. Uh, just make sure to read ketone strips. And I get my ketone test strips from Universal Drug Store out of Canada. They're the cheapest I found, the easiest. Someone says Australia, you can get them, but um, the ones I use are from Universal Drug Store. And I buy enough that I get the free shipping, which drives down the price per strip as well. Um, Farmer Mima, at our fish fry, all the carb eaters had their plates piled high and had dessert. I had fish and a small serving of faux potato salad, and you were stuffed. This is another thing, guys. I'm amazed how little food. My husband and I, my husband is a fit man. He has a physically demanding job. He, when he's feeling well, we've both been recovering from this flu, gets on a bicycle. Nothing for him to do 20, 30, 40, 50 miles on a bicycle. He didn't even eat dinner last night. And yesterday's lunch was some Italian sausages from Costco, a zucchini thrown in, and a scrambled egg thrown in and thrown together. We both ate three, you know, we pick at that and it's done. It's amazing how little food you need. I truly need. Um, Liz Montoya. Good morning, everybody. I have a TMI question. Does anyone get the runs right before you, you lose weight? Uh, that's not TMI. We're all friends here. Um, most people's bowel issues clear up with this, but it might be if you're overdoing co coconut oil, MCT oil, which neither of them you need, or magnesium. Hey, Gene O'Connor in the house. Hey, everybody. How's it going, Gene? Uh, vintage Girls. Hey, Vintage Girls. Shout out to my girls at O2 Fitness in historic Wilmington, North Carolina. Uh, looking sharp. What do you think? i got to get to the gym. Okay, skin. I'm going to say this again. Um, my skin. People ask about my skin. I only see the crepe and the wrinkles. And I got a pimple. What's with that? Um, my tummy, I won't show you. But it is crepey. It's crepey like my arms are crepey. Um, but my skin is better than I would have anticipated having lost 97.4 pounds on a 5 foot 1 inch frame. Uh, I don't have an answer for that. I am still hoping to get the esthetician from Duke, who you might remember me mentioning, to uh, do me a little interview. She's shy. Um, so I'm going to see what I can do and ask her some questions. Um, I don't have an explanation for why I don't have as many folds of skin. Even my GP said, where are your folds of skin? Could be genetics. Could be that I lost really slowly. And here is another topic. The people who lose the 30 pounds in a month, great. The people who say they've lost 20 pounds in a week, great. I look at that really skeptically. Um, I mean, some people are just trying to drive attention to a Facebook group or a YouTube channel or something like that. And that's fine. That's fine. If they've lost 20 pounds in a week, that's great. Um, that is not typical. Okay, I had a lot of weight to lose. A lot, okay? Clearly. I've lost 97.4 pounds. I'm five feet one inches tall. Been heavy for a really long time. I'm actually 115 and a half pounds off my very heaviest, but 97.4 since doing strict keto. Um, I'm a slow loser, guys. Slow. If you're losing slowly, who cares? How long have you been overweight? What do you care if it's slow? What do you care if it's erratic? Mine would be up, you know, down, down. From when I very first started, down, down, down. All that was water. And then up, and then down, down, up, up, down, 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 up, up, down, 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 up, 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 down, down, down. I've gone up five days in a row. I just looked last year. I put on four and a half pounds from one day to the next, uh, this, this day last year. So stick with it. I, I never stopped. I was never tempted to, to stop. I would often say, oh, I've probably lost all I'm going to lose um, because, you know, your mindset is, well, I'm, I'm, I've lost 50 pounds. That's all I'm going to lose. But I'm happy. I feel better. I can move better. I'm so, so happy. Um, I don't care. I'm never going to change. And I still feel that way. I was never tempted to stop because the science made sense to me. 
If you read The Art and Science of Low-Carbohydrate Living by Dr. Stenian Velik, I'll put a link after this thing into the, into the comments. It, and if you enjoy a little bit of sciencey stuff, it really explains why this works. And is almost, almost guaranteed to work done if you are in a well-formulated ketogenic diet, which is a phrase coined by Dr. Stenian Velik. Um, okay, Mother Many Horses, you've only just heard of NCT oil, don't know much about it, forget it. Don't even research it. It stands for a medium chain triglyceride, which is a medium chain fat. You can buy it because medium chain fats, medium chain triglyceride cannot be stored in the body. It needs to be immediately burned for fuel uh, or absorbed into the system and washes out. Hence, Hence, it can, make, it can make it look like you're in ketosis. But actually, I'm not even sure that it'll do that. But what happens is your body, if, even if it's a, a fat burner, will burn that for fuel first. Think of it like this. It's lighter fluid that you keep pouring on a fire. The MCT oil, the coconut oil, is lighter fluid you're burning on a flame to keep it going. When what you really want, it'll keep the flame going. But what you really want is to burn your cord of firewood that's sitting on your backside. Think of a cord of firewood as body fat. You want to burn that. You don't want to keep the flame going by using lighter fluid. Stop the lighter fluid, throw a nice aged hickory log. And some of our cords of wood have been aging a long time. Do you hear me? I, um, York 2279, I want to say my A1C was 13.2 on April 27th. I haven't had insulin in over three weeks. Belly bruises are gone. Yay. Now, York 2279, are you doing this under a doctor's supervision? I hope. You know, you don't want to mess around with your insulin. Be careful. Um, Liz Pollard, I gained seven pounds in two days eating Krispy Kreme and chocolate milk. I'm not going to do that again. And I didn't really enjoy it like I would have in the past. Bad experiment. I was just talking to a friend of mine uh, today. I said, listen, I think a lot of people have to satisfy their own curiosity. They might be doing this. Everything's running along. They're really curious. Oh, would it really hurt if I had some carbs? And very often you feel so physically sick afterwards. And then you... You know, we put on water. At least not seven pounds of fat. It was, you know, everything filling back up with water. But that makes you uncomfortable. Plus, it can make you feel sick. Um, mother of many horses. Well, the first cord I noticed missing was in my But I know, right. It's funny where your body loses. Uh, I went from having a giant badonka donk, lots of junk in my trunk, to having no acetal. Very surprising. All right, I am going to turn this back over to you guys. I want to make sure that I've covered everything. To recap, you might think you can't do this. And it may not be the right time for you. So if it's not the right time, that's cool. Like I said, it'll be here when you get back. Our body, this is the way Jeff Bullock puts this. That, that burning ketones for fuel is the way we were designed. And over the last... 10,000 years, it's like, it's like a program, a computer program that's kind of been in sleep mode, just waiting for it to be rebooted. When he said that, I thought about that scene from the original Alien, or is it Aliens, where the people are on the spacecraft. The first scene, it shows some computer things going, and these sleeping pods open up, and everyone comes out. The thing was rebooted. I thought it was a great way to put it. Our bodies are programmed for this to work for us. If, they, if, if you're not there yet, if you're, if you're just not into it now or you're not quite ready, come back to it later. Your body will be able to do this. Our bodies are programmed. It's like our body's best optimal nutrition app. All we have to do is reboot it. Um, Okay, uh, I am going to, Denise Chestnut, I, I assume you're asking me, do I recommend broth? Yes, homemade bone broth is great. It has, it leaches the bones when you're, when they're simmering over 24, 48, 72 hours. And it's just easy. You just get a bunch of bones. They can be bones that you've kept from a rotisserie chicken or from your pork chops or from, you can mix all the bones together, like Noah's Ark of bones. Um, ribs from a prime rib or stew bones that you buy in the, 
um, stool for just the purpose. Put it in, simmer, three days, the, the simmering, the bones leach their minerals. So an excellent source of, of minerals. Calcium, magnesium, all the ums. And it's very good, plus collagen, which if you have the marrow in the bones. You know, put a little sodium in it, a little salt, and it is a very good thing to do. Um, the father, uh, Dr. Father Napier, I lost three pounds in two weeks after a plateau. Bravo. I'm so glad to hear that. Plateaus come and go. I'm going to say this again. I don't think I shared this enough. On average, over the last two years, I have hit a new low, and sometimes it's a tenth of a pound new low, on average, every 53 days. That's nearly two months, okay? So people get upset they haven't lost anything in two weeks or three weeks. Talk to me when you haven't lost in 53 days. But then I always lose. Stick with it. Have patience. It's good for the soul. It's a good practice to be patient. Um, Kim, going into Kim Nordigan, uh, going being in ketosis and burning fat is more important to me than eating bad carbs. Cheated three times since January. It's not worth it. Kim, and also I want to thank you. Kim is a patron. Um, I really want to give a shout out to my patrons. This is from Patreon.com. A little bit of a of a plug here for it because these folks have been fantastic. There is patron only content on that site. I don't publish it anywhere else. Um, I'm ramping that up. And uh, for those of you who are patrons on the site, please make sure you sign up for the patron only video chats. You should have all gotten links if you uh, if if you're um, at a certain level and your card is cleared. And we're getting ready for, I'm going to do a patron-only live session like this, but it'll be for patrons only. So thank you, Kim. You're always so generous and conscientious. Um, Raymond Shope writes, hey, Raymond, haven't heard from you in a while. Plateaus for me seemed to happen when I was eating too few calories and changing it back to maintenance calories. Um, I asked Dr. Westman and Jackie Everstein on the cruise about that, and they said there's not really any science uh, or reason why increasing calories should make you lose weight it could be a coincidence they said they both kind of shook their heads immediately but if it works for you hallelujah um can you do chicken broth of course you can do anything uh you like susan you're waiting on your cup okay did you buy it through the um did you get it through the did you get it through the website because i think you're entitled to one um sorry my mind just wondered um, I've lost 10, uh, Myra Blanco, I've lost 10 pounds in three months and have not seen more progress. I'm trying to eat less cheese and see if that helps me. This is the first time I'm on a live Casey. It's great information. Uh, thank you for joining Maya, Myra. Um, yeah, cheese, keep in mind on the plan is two ounces a day. It's not unlimited. And I had to, I had to cut back cause I love cheese. And it's just an easy thing, you know, to snack on. So I, I watch the cheese. Um, Ten pounds in three months is great. And are you losing inches? Because that is a true and real thing. My, I know my body's like resculpting or something. It's still, and I'm an old lady. It's just, it just kind of moves. It's strange. Um, do you suggest that we do not eat fat bombs and use coconut oil and extra fats? Tina Anderson asks. You do what works for you. Keep in mind that fat bombs are fat. Bulletproof coffee with a bunch of coconut oil, which is a, a, a medium chain triglyceride, about 70% of coconut oil's medium chain triglyceride is MCT. If, if you're pouring fat into your gut, gullet, it's not gonna come off your body. Your body, Dr. Westman said it, and I asked him to repeat it at the support group meeting the other night. This is not a weight loss diet. This is not a weight loss diet. This is not a weight loss diet. This is a fat burning diet. Your body doesn't care where the fat comes. It can come in the form of MCT oil, which means you're not going to burn your body fat. It can come in the form of bulletproof coffee and fat bumps, which means you're not going to burn your body fat, at least depending on what your energy needs are. If it's working for you, great. Great. I might, I feed my husband fat bombs when I get around to it. And I suggested to him that he might want to start Bulletproof Coffee, but let me tell you why. He has no more body fat to lose. He's very trim. 
and he's very active. He can stand the extra fat. He needs the energy, right? He's not eating that much food. So by definition, he's not eating that much fat because he's not eating that much food because his appetite is suppressed. So that might be a good use. If you're at your ideal body weight and, and body fat composition, have at it. You don't increase carbs, you increase the fat if you get to that point. Gene O'Connor, coconut oil is a cooking oil in our house and that's the only thing we use it for. Same here, except I do use it in my husband's almond cookies because he can tolerate them. Um, we like it better than butter and holds up. Um, Miss Tara Michelle, my dad who is a type 2 diabetic just started keto. His blood sugar has been dropping lower at night time and he doesn't feel good. Any thoughts? Yes. One thing, I'm really glad he's doing this. He has got, is he on insulin? If he is, he must do this with a doctor's supervision. He must, okay? If you're doing keto, your body doesn't need as much insulin. The first thing Dr. Westman does in his clinic, if he has people on insulin, is he adjusts their insulin immediately, like that day, because otherwise their blood sugar can drop too much at night. Must be done under doctor's supervision. Um, yep, yeah, York 2279, Hippocrates, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. Not an idea, right? Okay, yeah, Chelsea, I went down a, a shoe size. I went down from seven and a half wides to six and a half or six. And I wear those sassy pumps on the cruise. Did I show you my shoes? I don't think I showed you my shoes. I ah, talk about getting out of your comfort zone. I've got four pairs of platform peep toe pumps in all different colors and styles. I rocked them. Um, okay, yeah. Do, make sure that he's checking with his doctor about dosage, okay? Ms. Tara Michelle, she says, no, he's not on insulin, but it takes metformin. Yeah, be careful. Guys, I'm going to start to wind this up. Does anyone have anything they want to share? Any questions for me? Uh, any questions for each other? I do. I'm going to go ahead and answer some questions that tend to come up. I'm 59 years old. I do not share my weight. Um, I do not have videos or blog posts from when I started. I wish I had. I just didn't think, didn't know this would work, and I didn't know it would become my life. Uh, and I'm thrilled to have it be my life. Thrilled. This is a great honor and privilege for me to be able to connect with you people. Mary Alice Bendergrass, $10 super chat. Thank you. I wish when you did a super chat, you'd ask a question. So I feel like I'm earning my keep. Uh, Mackenstead, show us your shoes next time. I might do that. I might do that, Mackenstead. They're, that was a big deal for me to get because you always used to only wear black clogs, dance go knockoffs, because I couldn't wear dance goes because my feet were too wide. I was pretty much a frump. I mean, a super frump. Um, 20 pounds started in March, 63 years old, happy, happy. You're never too old for this. Like I said before, our bodies are literally programmed to do this, to be successful at this. We just have to re-up that app. Think of it that way. Reboot the app. Think of that scene from Aliens. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go back and look at it. Uh, Gene O'Connor, Mark has finally bypassed me at weight loss. Great, Gene. I'm so pleased for both of you. I know you feel good. Um, again, I am going to say on um, Tuesday, June 13th, if you can make it to Greensboro, North Carolina, 5.30 p.m., Texan Shirley's Pancake House, I'm planning on having my inaugural keto, low-carb meetup support group. I don't know where it will go from there, if at all. Maybe no one will show up. There may not be that much interest. Um, I don't. We might you know, try to make it a, a weekly little get-together a la Weight Watchers, except we won't be counting calories. We'll be celebrating the absence of carbs. Um, I don't know. That's kind of informational thing, and I want to see uh, what people want to do. So there we are. Um, Chelsea, I don't say breakfast, lunch, or dinner anymore. I say my meal today. And you know what, Chelsea, I do that. I, I, on Instagram, I'll often just write, here's my main meal of the day. And sometimes it's pretty small. I take the pictures really close up. So I'll be taking them on a, a, on a bread plate, not even a salad plate or a dinner plate. But, and so it looks like a big plate of food. You'd be like, eh, I'm perfectly happy. Um, Chelsea, my meal today is spaghetti squash with 
Olive oil, garlic, mm, besides my broth. Oh, and spinach, perfect, fantastic. Okay, um, gonna wind down. Oh, and later time, uh, everyone on board with this later time? I know it threw some people off um, because I've been doing it at 9 a.m., but people seem to be able to do things better at 11. I have to be honest, I'm not sure how much of the live stuff I can keep up. Um, scheduling is becoming an issue. I will do it as long as my schedule allows, and I will attempt to do another YouTube live on Monday at 11-ish. I do reserve the right to keep that open, maybe 1 p.m. or something. Um, so I'm going to take it off my calendar. Um, I got feedback about that, that it was on my calendar and I wasn't there. Um, wow, y'all are typing great. Time works great, says Susie Kirby. My husband went from 38 to a size 33 jeans. God, fantastic. Um, you love the later time. Okay, I'm going to try to do it later. Again, I'm going to kind of take it off the calendar because I'm not sure how often I can keep this up. I do have my, I'll be blunt as a spoon, my first priority are my patrons because um, they've been very devoted. And so I need to create content for them. And then I, I want to write more uh, for my blog. So there we are. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate the support. Be good to yourselves. Um, I do want to see this. The Meeks, uh, uh, the Mika 69, good morning. I'm struggling to stay consistent. I'm at home all day and eating out of boredom. Make a note to yourself. You don't need a magnet. Are you here out of habit or hunger? It's key. It's key. It's hard. It's hard to not eat out of boredom. Or habit find another hobby you know think of all the time and brain power that has been lost wasted on thinking about food thinking on preparing it shopping for it cooking it eating it and then feeling guilty about eating it the guilt after eating it and then starting the whole thing over again okay try to find another thing if you're eating out of boredom Set a timer for yourself. I'm going to set a timer for 15 minutes. I know I can go for 15 minutes without eating. And just don't eat. Do something else. Do a load of laundry. Walk the dog. Go plant a daffodil. Um, take up scuba diving. Do something. Read a book. Read a good magazine. Research the art and science of low-carbohydrate living. Um, and then in 15 minutes, set it again. Get your steps in. Hey, one last thing. Okay, I know I've probably lost a lot of people here. I would love, I don't wear a Fitbit. I used to, but I wear a Garmin. If anyone wears a Garmin product, a Vivo Active, a Vivo Fit, I don't know what all these stepper things are, I would love to enter into a challenge together and see, it's, it's doing something, some activity day or at least getting your steps in. By the way, I have. Um, I have made my fitness pal. I've just taken it down. I'm not taking it down. I'm just not sharing it. I talked about that in the last live. I've gotten feedback about that, but I'm sorry. One thing, the time that it was, I was spending, I didn't need to be spending that time locking my food, and I have a philosophical reason why I didn't either. So I've, I continue to get requests to see it, but I'm not going to be uh, showing them to anyone else. Okay, guys. It is 11. 59 and 27 seconds Eastern Daylight Time. Y'all have a great weekend. Thank you for the support. Uh, support. There goes the grandfather clock. And I hope to be back Monday morning. Um, keep it in the road, okay? Be kind to yourselves. Be kind to each other. No one gets a vote on what you eat. You don't get a vote on what anyone else eats. Keep your carbs below 20. Eat fatty sources of protein. If you're not hungry, don't eat. Don't try to get in your calories. That's not, that's not a thing. If you're not hungry, don't eat. Stop when you're satisfied. Peace.